Welcome to Happily Ever After is just the beginning. Keeping your relationship not just together, but happy, and we mean truly happy, is part art and part science. You've come to the right place. Here's your host, Leslie Dorries. If you've ever looked for relationship advice, you've probably heard that good communication is the key to making it work. And if you're a regular listener to the show, you've heard a lot about good communication. That's because you can't resolve things if you can't talk about them. And in my work, I talk about four areas of communication, timing, presentation, talking, and listening, with the most important one being listening. And one of my all-time favorite quotes about listening is from David Augsburger, and he said, Being heard is so close to being loved that for the average person, there is no difference. So being heard is the first step to being understood. And this is so important for connection. So today I'm taking another dive into communication, more specifically, something called compassionate listening. And I'm thrilled to welcome my guests, Michael Gingrich and Tom Caden. They are the founders of someone to tell it to. So gentlemen, thank you so much for being on the show and talking about what I think is going to be a really enlightening conversation. First, thank you so much for having us on on this uh, program today. We uh, really consider it an honor and uh, we're thrilled to talk with you. Appreciate it a lot. And thank you for sharing the David Augsburger quote, because we we have used that same (laughs) quote so many times as well. Because we really like it, mm-hmm. it and um, appreciate others who uh, who do too. So the first question is, what is compassionate listening? How is that different from just run-of-the-mill average listening? Yeah, well, we'll just start by uh, telling you a little bit about how we got started as an organization. Okay. Michael and I were dear friends. Uh, we're actually in our 10-year anniversary. We're a nonprofit and um, we just started off as really good friends and Michael kind of served as a mentor for me and uh, our relationship just took, kind of took off and, um, you know, we became each other, someone to tell it to. Mm-hmm. And with that being said, we just started to see that there was just this global need for others to be heard. And so we wanted to create this safe space for people, um, whether it be through email or private messaging through social media, we have conference calls and Prior to Zoom, we utilized <laughs> Skype. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just uh, we really could see that there was this epidemic of loneliness and disconnection happening around the world, and we just wanted to do something about it. And uh, you know, we just tried to our our our, our best ability to utilize social media for good. Um, and so that's been uh, the heart of our mission. Thank goodness mm-hmm. somebody is using trying to use social media for good because it right. can be it can be quite challenging. And if and if the last couple of years have taught us nothing, it is truly the importance of connection and being able to be seen, heard, and validated. So I thank you guys so much for what you're doing. Thank you. Val- validated is another good word there. Mm-hmm. We try to validate as much as we possibly can others experiences, others feelings, others, um, you know, just thoughts and, and dreams and, and whatever they're, they're ever they're going through to validate that, yes, this is real and, and to celebrate with them when, you know, they're celebrating to, to feel with them when they're feeling bad, mm-hmm. when they are overwhelmed, when they aren't sure where to turn or what to do. So that's what part of, you know, compassionate listening is. It's feeling with other people. And it, it's also not judging mm-hmm. them for what they feel or what they're going through. It is not trying to fix them, <laughs> diagnose them. It is is simply allowing them to share where they are, what they are feeling, how they are feeling, and letting them know that all of that is real and that all of that matters. And that and also we believe that compassionate listening is 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 respecting everyone and and showing people that they have value no matter who they are, what they are 
but that they are that they are important. And that sound, I mean, and by the way, I think that's fantastic. And it sounds like, well, doesn't everybody do this? <laughs> um, you know, because it it's something we all we all want. I would argue it's something we all need. And it can be so very difficult because your experience of a situation, I mean, you and I could experience the exact same situation, but walk away with very different um, perceptions of what just happened, or or it landed with me differently than it landed with you, and it's not a right or wrong thing, which is what I think gets a lot of people into trouble. What I'm hearing from you is that it's just an is thing. Is that is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, we um, our model as an organization is we do all of our listening in pairs, um, mm -hmm. listening two by two because we believe that there's just strength in numbers. And, and when both of our listeners are available, we call everybody someone, mm -hmm. uh, you're someone, I'm someone, Michael, someone, we're all someone. And when we make ourselves available to the, our someone's having a second person uh, who is listening alongside of us makes a big difference as well, because we hear different things mm -hmm. and, as you mentioned. And, and that way we can both uh, respond and hopefully create even more dialogue because we're hearing different things. Mm -hmm. So why is compassionate listening so important for individual relationships? I think part of the answer is, is what we've already said mm -hmm. that when we are judged mm -hmm. by someone, <laughs> It does not help the relationship a lot. <laughs> someone tries to tell us what to do or fix us. Mm -hmm. That also is not necessarily good for the, the relationship. It puts up barriers and defensiveness mm -hmm. and sometimes fear. And we don't know, you know, we don't sometimes know where we stand with people or we do know where we stand and it's not always good. <laughs> and and that's, that, that is part of it. It's, it's feeling as if it's, it's, knowing that we we matter i mean that, that compassionate listening we also think is not interrupting as as much as you know we all can want, want to respond and, mm -hmm. and and just get our thoughts in there and our our own insights in there but we some we too often as humans do that too quickly and that's not very compassionate because it often shuts people down and gives them and and shows them that well or maybe says to them that what they're saying isn't that important, that it, that their feelings don't matter um, or whatever. So we, we hope that compassion, that the compassionate part of it is that we're feeling with yeah. them and, and, and really feeling as much as we can, not exactly what they're experiencing or feeling because you can't do, you know, that's impossible, uh -huh. but that they are feeling something and that it does matter what they're feeling it matters to them and and so you you talked about you've mentioned this word twice and it's about judgment and that is such a hurdle to get over um you know especially because maybe the the person who's sharing isn't you know i talked about presentation and how we share things and maybe they're not sharing it in in a way that's easy to accept. So I'm thinking about, you know, when people will say, well, you did this, or why did you, or, you know, you made me mad, or, you know, all these, you know, these, these things that automatically trigger the defensive response, um, you know, and then we're, and then we're looking for an out as to why what that person experienced isn't true, isn't valid, isn't real, because it would mean I have ownership in that. So that's that judgment piece. How do we, how do we move past that? I think you kind of hinted at it to a degree and, and we actually lead a lot of groups and organizations through uh, compassionate listening training. And we talk extensively about this, but we'll kind of give you a synopsis of asking good questions, questions mm -hmm. that uh, lead to furthering a dialogue and a conversation rather than putting people on the defensive by asking why questions. <laughs> um, what happens when we ask why questions, as Michael mentioned, it immediately puts us on the defensive. And mm -hmm. then 
we generally shut down or it aggravates us and then we lash out in anger. Mm -hmm. And those are inhibiting factors to furthering a relationship that just fosters disconnection. Um, so I think ask how we ask questions makes a big difference. Also, just not asking yes and no questions, um, questions that really draw things out uh, to try and learn more. Um, mm -hmm. Because when we feel judged, again, we don't want to we don't want to talk uh, in greater detail. Mm -hmm. so, you know, the types of questions we want to make sure that they're sensitive, they're compassionate, they're understanding. Um, it's not putting people on the defensive. Uh, those types of things really make a big difference. And so how, because I, as, as you're saying this, and, and one of the things that I t try to teach my clients is don't use the word you unless it's I love you, you're wonderful, I'm glad you're in my life. Or why? <laughs> or yeah, exactly, why? Exactly. Right. Exactly. And 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 never put why and you in the same sentence because that's almost always going to um, you know deliver that that defensive response that, as you well said, keeps conversation and connection from happening. It's really off putting. Um, you know, and so, but so if I am, if I have had a very different experience from you and you're sharing your experience and I'm sitting there in the back of my mind going, that's not what happened. What is, what is, what is their problem? You know, how, how do we get past that? How do we move into this recognition that, that, Yes, I I experienced it differently from you. That does not invalidate your experience. <laughs> that, that, that's, a, that's a really good question, and I, I I'm not I'm hoping this is <laughs> part of the answer for it. We believe that to really listen well, you have to believe that the person to whom you're listening has a right to their thoughts, mm. their feelings, their experiences, their perceptions, uh, and their, their reactions. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean we trust us. We have been in plenty of conversations with people where we don't agree with, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with their conclusions or their stance are their viewpoint that we thought you know we we have different different viewpoints from 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 them uh -huh. that's one of the one of the ways that we get it helps is that we do it together so that we know that we're not in it alone and it's something we can process when it's over among ourselves and we're not breaking confidentiality uh -huh. and it helps us to be healthy uh -huh. and be less you know less prone to judgment less prone to trying to re repudiate what someone's feeling um, or thinking, um, but, but believing that they, everyone has a right to their, to their, their opinions and thoughts uh -huh. and feelings, even if we don't, we don't have the same ones. Um, but it is trying to draw them out more and understand why they feel the way, but, you know, without saying, why do you feel that right. way? But, is now please tell us more about this. Is uh -huh. there, you know, what what is it that led you to believe this or think this uh -huh. or remember this? <laughs> um, does that make any sense? It, and, and it helps. It's drawing them out because we believe that the more we l hear someone's story, even if it's a very difficult story, and they often are. Uh -huh the more we can grow in at least respecting why uh -huh. they may act or feel the way they do. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Is oh, that, yeah, it, it, it does. Yeah, because you know, when I work with my clients and you know, we're trying to figure out what's going on and they tell me their stories, it's like, well, of course you would do this. How could you not do this? I mean, it's it's you know when when they when they go go into that deeper explanation, it's like oh, well this makes perfect sense now. Um, it may still not be helpful ways of being, but but understanding why somebody is is feeling that way.